fish not only come together in great shoals for defense, but at other critical times in their lives, when they're ready to spawn. These events only occur for a few days each year. Snapper are normally solitary, but they've traveled here from hundreds of miles away to gather off the coast of Belize. Along this one reef, Kubera, Dog and Mutton Snapper form huge shoals. Sixty meters down, there is an eerie coolness to the scene. But things are about to hot up. It's the evening of the full moon. The tides are just right. A great column of fish leaves the bottom. As they rise through the water, small groups break free of the shoal. Each burst is led by a female, with the males racing behind. As she sheds her eggs, they add their sperm to the mix. By synchronizing the time when they gather together, the maximum numbers of fish can join in this mass spawning. Millions of fertilized eggs are released, cast into the ocean currents. straight into a dangerous world. Whale sharks, the largest fish on Earth. Each shark might weigh 10 tons, yet they feed on the tiniest creatures, including snapper eggs. Life is being created, sustained, and destroyed simultaneously in one huge event. The struggle for life encapsulated into a single moment. The oceans are perilous places to live, yet fish have developed the most extraordinary means for survival. Their astounding diversity, the product of millions of years of evolution, has enabled them to triumph. Dominating the one habitat that we have so far failed to make our own. Filming underwater raised all sorts of problems for the life team. Not least of which was that they were only able to experience the underwater world for as long as the air on their backs or in their lungs held out. But over three years, the team were lucky enough to capture on film some extraordinary moments in the lives of fish. The 
waters off the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico are a rich hunting ground for sailfish. Cameraman Rick Rosenthal has teamed up with sport fishing captain Anthony Mandillo to try and film the hunting behavior of these amazing animals. It's fish! Feeding birds lead them to the sailfish. Right here. Right here. Getting to the bait balls and into the water quickly is key before the feast is consumed. Get ready! They're gonna eat it. They're gonna screw. Everybody hang on. Let's go swimming now, now. Come on, get in there. It's all very well telling Rick to hurry. But these fish are capable of swimming at over 60 miles an hour. Just keeping up with them is hard enough. Getting right in amongst the action is vital, but Rick has to try to avoid becoming part of it. Bills nearly one meter long, scything through the water at breakneck speed, are guaranteed to get the heart racing. holds his nerve as the sailfish pick off sardine after sardine right in front of him. Almost as soon as it started, it was all over. That's a wild sea show out there today. Really wild. Must have been 50 sailfish if there was, or 49. But very aggressive fish, very hungry, everybody on the move. And I had to just keep kicking and kicking and kicking and kicking and kicking and kicking and keeping the action. Because after all, the sardine patch was eaten up to just a little sliver. And then it was over. Nearly 2,000 miles away on the other side of the Caribbean, another crew is taking a slightly different approach. They are trying to film flying fish. The team sets out at dawn on the Hog Snapper, a commercial fishing boat. Conditions are in stark contrast to the gleaming sport fishing boat in Mexico. It's Doug, he's ready for action, look. They are hoping to use the local fishermen's expertise to put them in the right place at the right time. Hey, yeah, Roger that, yeah, Roger that. Oh, you catching there's food? You catching dinner, lunch and breakfast, you know? Roger. It's not a big boat, and the crew's bedroom has now become the kitchen. We are having fried bacon, fried egg this morning. Fried bacon, fried eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the trainee chef. And I don't, so I don't get to wear the white wellies. <laughs> Rather than racing around the ocean chasing the action, the flying fish team have to sit it out and wait for the fish to come to them. Flying fish will spawn onto debris in the water, and the team tie onto a floating palm frond to try and make sure they're close by in case the action begins. And sure enough, they don't have long to wait. Thousands of fish have massed below the surface, all intent on reaching the frond. And the frond is not the only thing that they're trying to lay their eggs on. The 
weight of the eggs sinks the palm frond and puts an end to the spawning and to the crew's filming. It's moments like that we do the job for. Everything was right. The light was right, blue water. The four tons of flying fish all going mental. Thanks, Barry. You're welcome. Wow. But now the fish's attention is turned to something bigger. They're spawning directly onto the boat. Yeah. Barry is worried as he drags up a huge sheet of eggs. I don't bring it any more than check it out. I cleaned this off like five minutes ago. Yeah. Right? Right now the problem is that there are too many flying fish too around, many flying around us. If we go through the night with the lights on and stuff, more and more and more will keep coming. And what they're doing here is they're actually laying on the boat now. So the boat has become their object, and that is not good. So basically, you're worried that if we just stay on this drift, we're going to sink the boat. Five hours from now, that will be 3,000 pounds. Yeah. 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 In the back here, they will sure. sink the boat. Okay. So we're going to leave it tonight. That's good. Yeah, we can't stay here. Yeah. <laughs> Just five minutes of spawning has produced this. The team have no option but to move on. The next day, the search for flying fish begins all over again. This time, the team want to film the fish doing what they're famous for. We've got some lovely shots of them spawning, but now, now the really hard bit of trying to get them flying. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a good challenge. The fish are around, but they're all too far off to film. The action is impressive this morning. Unpredictable, but impressive, but it's distant. You know, it's not happening next to the boat today. So they're either being chased off by something or they're just not interested. Look, look, look! Ah, it's low! Ay, ay, ay. The next day, the crew decides to try a different approach. Go. All right, let's go. Now they're just where they need to be, but it puts them directly in the firing line. <laughs> I guess that's what. Despite being bombarded, their strategy is paying off. That was amazing. We spent a long time in that wee boat today, thanks. But um, the last two hours were just off the scale. We're just getting shot after shot. We need, can't wait to watch in the big monitor, but it felt really good. And Doug is right. It worked. Flying fish taking to the air and flying slowed down 40 times. By working with people more used to catching fish than filming them, the life team have been able to gain a unique insight into the hidden world of fish. For your free Open University Tree of Life poster, call 0845 300 or visit bbc.co.uk forward slash life. If you'd like to see more of David Attenborough's favourite moments from 30 years of filmmaking, go online to the new Wildlife Finder site at bbc.co.uk slash wildlife finder. Music and film star Harry Connick Jr. is on The Graham Norton Show on BBC One after the news next. <laughs>